Hello, my name is Marie Law and I'm an Education Assistant here at the Hastings Museum. For today's Museum Minute, we will be remembering the school children's blizzard of 1888. Plains have long been known for the severity of its winter storms. With their high winds and blowing snow, for not modern day Nebraskans, with our central heat, cell phones, television, and four wheel drive vehicles, blizzards are a little more than an inconvenience. But to the pioneer living in his dugout, shelter, sod house, or claim shanty, a blizzard was brought fear, cold, hunger, or loss of life. The blizzard of January 12, 1888 was no exception. Known as a school children's blizzard, it is one of the most well-known blizzards in Nebraska history. While it was not too severe here in Adams County, elsewhere in the Northwest and Central Plains region of the United States, many lives were lost. More than 100 people perished throughout Nebraska, with many more suffering from frostbite. To their ears, hands, and feet, ice-sealed nostrils, in minutes, and freezing eyelids for those fighting the nightmarish storm. It all began on a Thursday afternoon here in Nebraska. There had been unseasonably warm weather the previous day and that morning. Cattle were out in the fields. Workers were out of doors, many without coats, and even school children were playing outside at noon recess. Within a matter of hours, Arctic wind from Canada rapidly pushed south across Montana, east to the Dakotas, and south to Texas. Temperatures plunged to 40 below zero Fahrenheit, in much of northern Dakota Territory. Valentine, Nebraska was 30 degrees at 6 a.m. and negative 14 below at 9 p.m. Along with the cold air, the storm brought high winds and heavy snow, the combination creating blinding conditions. The wind was described as a loud roaring train from the Burlington Rail Line nearby, viciously whirling dirty snow and ice against everything, including body or animal in its path. The storm lasted about 18 hours m over most of the area, with Lincoln recording about seven inches of snow and much and other areas much less. However, despite the minor amount of snow, the newspapers of the time recorded that it took residents of the state nearly two weeks to dig out from the drifted snow. Most of the victims of the blizzard were children trying to make their way home from school in rural areas and adults working outside away from home in the fields. All had difficulty reaching their destinations in the awful blinding conditions. Many were later found dead, mere feet from shelter. Some young teachers, not more than teenagers themselves, released their students in the hopes that the children would make their way home or attempted to guide them themselves. This decision cost many their lives or limbs due to hypothermia and frostbite. However, many teachers kept their students overnight or for days in the schoolhouses until rescuers arrived or the worsening conditions required action. Sadly, the schoolhouses of the time on the prairie were not built to withstand hurricane force winds. They were supplied with little more than a day's use of heating fuel for a small stove and the walls were not insulated to retain heat. The buildings were often more poorly built than the prairie homes. Many were made to be temporary, movable structures with tarp roofs. In one of those rural school houses, just six miles south of Ord, Nebraska, Minnie Freeman was teaching her students when the storm hit. She was hailed as a heroine 
for successfully leading her students to shelter after the storm tore the roof off of her one-room schoolhouse. Miss Freeman said she found a ball of twine to, on her desk and tied the students together two by two with instructions not to let go of the student in front of them. They struggled into the north wind to get to a farmhouse a half mile away. Miss Freeman did not look at her actions of getting the children safely to the nearby house as an act of heroism, but as a duty that needed to be done and was unwilling to accept any praise. But her name and story were the first to come out of the storm to hit the local and national newspapers, and she reluctantly became the state and country's heroine. Her story was just one of many, as other teachers throughout the region saved their students from the plight of the storm. In Hastings, the local hero of the blizzard was Professor F. M. Hickok of Hastings College. Professor Hickok was blind, but could easily navigate his way around town. During the height of the blizzard, Professor Hickok made his way to the local grade school where he had the children grasp hands, forming a human chain. As he was able to keep his sense of direction in the blowing snow, he heroically led each of the children to their homes where none suffered from the blizzard. Bravery came from men, women, and children caught in unexpected situations during the storm. Some efforts were successful, others resulted in the lifeless bodies of children and adults embraced by the snow. The pioneers of the prairie dealt with the challenges of the blizzard and its hazards promptly and often single-handedly in order to survive. Historians rank the school children's blizzard of 1888 among the most severe to hit Nebraska, and no other is built in Nebraska lores more. Minnie Freeman's act of heroism was commemorated in a popular song of the day called 13 Were Saved, or Nebraska's Fearless Maid. and later a mosaic mural was placed in Nebraska State Capitol amid a snowy scene leading her students to safety. The blizzard of January 12, 1888 covered nearly one third of the entire nation and speculated to cause the deaths of more than 100 people. The fortitude and experiences of the Great Plains pioneers became the basis for storytellers, historians, and songwriters for more than 150 years. For more Museum Minutes, you can follow us online at HastingsMuseum.org.